In this online lecture, we're going to discuss the general mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution, which is a very popular aromatic reaction. And let's look at our key points first here. Number one, we're going to see that electrophilic aromatic substitution consists of an aromatic reactant, something called a pre-electrophile, and something called an electrophile maker, so three things. We're also going to see number two, the reaction begins with a pre-step, which involves the electrophile maker turning the pre-electrophile into a full-fledged reactive electrophile. We're also going to see three, the pre-step is necessary to create a highly reactive electrophile because remember the high stability of aromatic molecules makes them not very reactive. So that's why we have to prep up an electrophile and make him more reactive. We're also going to see number four that the aromatic molecule acts as the nucleophile in the mechanism. And we're also going to see five that the reaction mechanism involves a carbocation and always three resonance structures in its general form. And the last thing we're going to see here, number six, is that the reaction ends by regenerating aromaticity. We're going to see this is a key factor in many of the aromatic reactions that we're going to learn. So let's look at it here. Here's what makes up an aromatic reaction. You have this molecule right here, and you're going to react a pre-electrophile and an electrophile maker, and you should end up with something like this, an electrophilic aromatic substitution. Notice we're adding an E to this molecule, which originally had an H right here, which makes this the general layout again for electrophilic aromatic substitution. Notice the pre-electrophile, it's the electrophile right here that's replacing the hydrogen and being put onto the ring. And it's this pre-electrophile right here that's going to first react with this electrophile maker down here. So let's talk about that. Remember, the first step here is the pre-electrophile reacts with the electrophile maker, and let's call this the pre-step. And here's, in general, what it's going to look like. You got the pre-electrophile, you got the electrophile maker here. They react together, and the electrophile maker makes the pre-electrophile a full-fledged, positively charged electrophile. That's simply making the electrophile more electrophilic, more unstable, and therefore more reactive. After this happens, this is when we react it then with benzene or any other aromatic molecule. And here's what's going to happen for this case in benzene. The first step of the mechanism is the pi electrons in the benzene ring jump over here and attack this electrophile. What we would end up with is this as a structure right here. Notice the electrophile has attached to the ring and we've created a carbocation here. Notice this structure has resonance. I can say that these pi electrons here jump up this way, and that would generate this resulting resonance structure right here. But notice even this structure has resonance. I can say these electrons fall down here and produce this as a resulting resonance structure. Notice here, that means that this intermediate is pretty stable because of all of its resonance. And it's actually because of this why this reaction goes down its pathway. And it's the fact that getting all these resonance structures as an intermediate gives this reaction an incentive to happen. But let's see how it all ends here. The next step of the actual mechanism is that some base comes along and rips off this hydrogen right here, and the electrons connecting that hydrogen to the benzene ring, they fall down between these two carbons here, and you end up with this as a result. Notice the electrophile stays attached to the benzene ring. We've recreated the double bond, and as a side product, we have the base attached to that hydrogen that he abstracted. Notice our molecule is back to being aromatic. But let's dig a little bit deeper into this mechanism and make sure we understand it here. And let's focus first on this first step. Remember, we learned before in a previous online lecture that if you have a regular alkene like this and you react an electrophile with him, the first step of the mechanism was the two electrons in the pi bond attack the electrophile. Notice that's exactly what's happening in the reaction above. So if you remember this from Orgo 1, 
it'll help you with pulling off the mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution. And remember, what was the result of this bottom reaction? When this happened, remember, this was the result. The electrophile attached to one of the carbons, and the other carbon that was originally involved in a double bond now becomes the carbocation. So notice these similarities. A carbon is getting an electrophile like this, and we're also getting a carbocation like this. So, so far, this new mechanism is not really any different from what we've seen before. That is, the double bond in the aromatic ring is almost acting like a typical alkene double bond. But here's where the differences lie. Remember, when we were learning this reaction below before, then it was some kind of nucleophile would then attach itself to the carbocation. And when this happens, it made a new bond between that carbon and that nucleophile. This was the product of this reaction. But notice, there's no incentive for this to happen for our aromatic ring here. Notice, if we said, for instance, we were going to add a nucleophile to this, and if the nucleophile attached to that carbocation like we saw before, then this is what we would get as a result. And notice what you see here. You have a non-aromatic product. Notice we got an sp3 carbon right here. We got another sp3 carbon, which means we wouldn't have an uninterrupted pi electron cloud, and we also wouldn't have the necessary odd pairs of pi electrons. And here's kind of a major theme again in this chapter, is that if you start with an aromatic molecule in a reaction, you typically end up with an aromatic product. So we would say simply this would not happen. So, let's go back to our electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Remember, we said the first step was the double bond attacks the electrophile, and we get these three resonance structures. But remember, our reaction ends differently. Remember, it involves a base abstracting this hydrogen, the electrons coming down here, creating a double bond and making this as a product. Notice that's basically an elimination reaction. We're eliminating that hydrogen and we're creating a double bond. And notice our product is back to being aromatic here. So this is why electrophilic aromatic substitution takes this particular pathway instead of behaving like a typical alkene. And notice also in the process, we're taking this hydrogen right here and we're replacing him with an electrophile. So what's important here is that you understand this big picture stuff because we're going to see that all the reactions in this section follow this general mechanism. So if you can understand what's happening in front of you here, you basically know all the reactions. For instance, we're going to see in other online lectures that halogenation of a benzene ring follows this general mechanism. Another reaction that does this is something called nitration. Another one is called sulfonation. Another reaction is Friedel-Crafts alkylation. And lastly, you have Friedel-Crafts acylation. All of these reactions follow that general mechanism. And in the other online lectures, when I specifically teach you each one of these reactions, make sure you pay attention to this big picture that we discussed in this online lecture. This again will help you remember or recall all of the mechanisms for these reactions that we would need to know for our organic chemistry test. So, what's it all about here? Key points. Number one, we saw electrophilic aromatic substitution consists of an aromatic reactant, a pre-electrophile, and an electrophile maker. We also saw two, the reaction begins with a pre-step, which involves the electrophile maker turning the pre-electrophile into a full-fledged reactive electrophile. We also saw the pre-step is necessary to create a highly reactive electrophile because the high stability of aromatic molecules makes them not very reactive. We also saw number four here. The aromatic molecule acts as the nucleophile and he attacks an electrophile. Five here, we saw the reaction mechanism involves a carbocation and always those three general resonance structures. And lastly, we saw number six here. The reaction ends by regenerating an aromatic molecule.